Welcome back to Flip Math and a new course. We're doing calculus. This is so exciting. I can't not wait to get into this stuff. Uh, you're going to have a great year. Uh, let me go over a few things that we're doing here, and that is with our calculus course this year, what we're going to be covering is AP Calculus AB material. We are not covering the AP Calculus BC stuff. We're just covering AB in this course. Now I have to put a little asterisk here by the AP just to make sure you know, okay, AP is officially advanced placement. That means College Board owns that term. It's like a copyrighted trademark term. They had nothing to do with this website, nothing to do with this lesson. So you're going to see that we're not going to, we're, we're giving them a shout out right now to make sure that oh, I don't get in trouble. We're not going to talk about AP necessarily the rest of the way, but you know, really, if we're talking about a test that you might have at the end of the year, what are we talking about? I think you all know what we're talking about. So we're going to cover everything in this course that will cover the material that you'll need to be successful in an AB, uh, the AB calculus course. The two teachers you're going to have that you'll see around is Mr. Bean and Mr. Brust, although we're hoping to get some cameo visits from Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Kelly. But this year, we're, the two of us, Mr. Bean and Mr. Brust, we're going to be the ones focusing. So today, I am Mr. Bean. That's me. I'll be covering things in Unit 1 and Unit 2, and then Mr. Brust will take over when we get to Unit 3. Next, a quick word on calculators. It is important for you to understand that each time you see any of our lessons or any of our practice problems, you're going to expect that you will not be using a calculator. Okay, don't use one of these things. We'll specifically tell you on which uh, problems you will be using a calculator. In fact, we're going to even have some lessons where a lot of the lesson is based on the use of a calculator. So you'll still need one. In fact, they're even allowed, ding, 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 they're allowed on the AP exam, at least a portion of it, but do not uh, expect to be able to use it on most of the stuff because we need to be able to do this without. There is a significant portion that you're tested on where you cannot use ones. Okay, So just look for a little symbol of some sort. We'll tell you when calculators are allowed on the practice. We're also trying to go things a little faster this year with our video lessons, so we may not have quite the fun little fluff or some of you like annoying fluff if you don't like it. Uh, so that hopefully will speed up the length of our video lessons. So the very first lesson is called Limits Graphically. For those of you who've had us before, if you've had our lessons in pre-calculus, this lesson hopefully is going to be really, really easy, but I need to approach this as if no one has ever seen this before, because depending on what pre-calculus class they had, they may or may not have seen this. So we're starting with very basics. What is a limit? A limit is, let's get this down in your notes, is a y value that the graph is going to approach from both the left and the right side of a given x value. So get that down in your notes, and I'll talk about what that means here as just the graph. So pause here if you don't have that written down yet. Because here, let's just talk about this. The limit. This is where we have this down here. What is the limit? Well, let's. how about we just talk about the y value first. This just means if x is a negative 3, then the y value is up here at 4. So if x equals negative 3, then the y value is a 4. That's easy. Down here, the limit is, I'm gonna, you're going to be drawing some arrows on here. So I want you to draw an arrow that goes like this, and an arrow that goes like this. Basically, we are approaching the left and right side of this x value, negative 3. That's what this means. As x approaches negative 3 from the left side, from the right side, what is the y value of this? It is a 4. Well, that was really easy. Okay, let's do this one f of negative 3. What is the y value when x equals negative 3? Well, there's a hole here. So since there's a hole, this is undefined. You could say undefined, or you could say uh, does not exist. In fact, the next ones I'm going to say does not exist because I could abbreviate that a lot faster than undefined. So there is no y value. But the limit, again, this is just where it is headed. So as we get closer and closer and closer to this x value of negative 3, the y value is a 4. It doesn't matter that there's nothing there. We're not talking about what's on the spot. We're talking about is it where is it headed to that spot, and it's headed to a y value of 4. Okay, this one. f of negative 3. So what's the y value when x equals negative 3? You go to where it's filled in, and it equals 1. That's what the function equals. It equals 1. But the limit, it's not about where the dot is. The limit, again, draw these little arrows. The limit is where is this graph approaching? And it's going closer and closer and closer from both the left and the right side to a y value of 4. So it stayed the same there. This one, x value is negative 3. The y value, there's the closed in dot, so it equals a 1. We're, we're looking for where the actual graph is filled in. 
this one, the left side, let's, so let's go like this. The left side's up here. The right side, if you look, you're approaching from the right side, we're approaching back towards negative 3. So starting on the right, coming back towards it. Uh, these are going to different places. So in this case, we say that the limit does not exist. This is a, I'm abbreviating, does not exist. Make it a little shorthand. Since the left side here is going to a different place than the right side of the, the graph, as we approach negative 3, there is no limit. All right, this one, f of negative 3. So when x equals negative 3, the y value is a 2. We're right here, so it equals a 2. And then the left side, if we approach negative 3, the left side's coming up here to a y value of 4. But as we approach from the right side, we approach, go back towards negative 3, the right side is approaching a y value of 1. And since those are not going to the same place, again, this limit does not exist. OK. Here we have the geeky math definition. This is just for Mr. Kelly. He loves this type of stuff. So while I do think it's important for you to read through and understand this, I also realize most of us aren't going to use this a whole bunch. If you're going on into to math and you're going to continue studying it, then yeah, we want to make sure we understand how to do these definitions. But really, when you're talking about what is a limit, you're going to use this as your example. You're just going to think about it. Okay, so it's the left side, the right side, they're going to this place, they're headed to 4. Okay, the limit's of 4. Uh, but this is what it's using with the geeky speak to understand a limit. So what is a one-sided limit? Before we were talking about from both sides. So a one-sided limit, which those will pop up, it's the y value that a function is getting closer and closer to. We're approaching it as an x value is approaching from just the left or the right side. So we're not coming from both sides, left and right side. We're coming from just one or the left side or from the right side and going back to the number. Here's an example of that. On this graph, we have the limit of f as x approaches 3 from the left is negative 1. Here's how you write that. We say x approaches 3, and we're going to say from the left side. That's what that little superscript here, up in the superscript, kind of like an exponent. The superscript is a minus, means we approach 3 from the left side, from the numbers that are less than 3. So we approach 3, we go to the left side, and we're approaching that way. Well, that y value right there is approaching a y value of negative 1. So that's the answer. Does not matter that it's not filled in, because remember, a limit is where it's approaching, not that it, it equals that exactly on that dot. All right, this one. So now we're going to approach uh, 3 from the right side. So we take this x value of 3. We're going to approach from the right side of 3. So you just, on the, the x value equals 3, you go right of it. And we're going to go back towards the number 3, and that's approaching a y value of 2. All right, that's some critical stuff right there, left and right sided limits. So rewind and watch example 2 again if that lost you at all. Let's do some examples with this. So example 3, you could, uh, if you feel pretty confident, you can start moving through these without me. I'm going to start doing them together. We, you don't have to pause. You can just go through this. So this one means negative 2 from the left side. So I go to x equals negative 2, and I move to the left side of negative 2. And now I'm going to go back towards negative 2 on the graph. So as you go back towards negative 2, what's the y value approaching? It's approaching the number 1. Letter B. X is going to approach negative 2 from the positive side. So here's negative 2. We're going to go from the right side of it and head back towards negative 2. So if we head back towards negative 2, it's approaching a y value of 2. I did not leave very much room in there. So x approaches negative 2. What if we're going from the, both the left side and the right side? That's what this means. When you see no superscript, a plus or minus, it means both sides. Well, the problem is the left side and the right side are different. We just did that in parts A and B. Therefore, there is no limit as x approaches negative 2. So we can say that it does not exist here. Letter D, x approaches 1. Where does x approach 1? So it doesn't have a little minus or plus in the superscript. So we're going to say that it's approaching both from the left side and from the right side. Are they headed to the same place? Yes, they are. They're headed right there together. They're going to crash and meet. And the y value is a 1. The x value being a 1 was just a coincidence, okay? The answer is the y values here. The limit as x approaches 0, so now, let's get rid of the, these. Now we're going to approach x value of 0. So here's an x value of 0. So we're going to approach from, from the left side, from the right side. That x value is 0 here, and the y value is a negative 2. 
Here we're approaching x is approaching 3 from the left side. So here x approaches 3 just from the left side. So we're only approaching from that side. And it is approaching a value of 5. Here we're having x approach negative 1. So if we approach negative 1 from both sides, so we've got to approach that way, we've got to approach that way. We're approaching both sides because there's no little superscript, and that is a y value of negative 3. And then the limit as x approaches negative 3, so that's this x value. The left side's approaching there, the right side's approaching there. So what's the y value? It's a 0. And then he, here are these last two, i and j. Again, this just means the x equals negative 3, what does the y equal? We're not doing a limit on these. So what's x equals negative 2? x equals negative 2, what's the y value? It's where the filled in dot is. So the function is equal to 1. Let me get rid of that part. So it equals 1. And then with x equals 1, y equals not 1. y is down here, the filled in dot. y equals negative 2. OK. So this is what you're going to see on your practice problems. Not too bad. We're going to start off the year with some fairly easy stuff. Uh, but let's review to ourselves, when does a limit not exist? First thing, if the left and right side limits are different. That's what we covered before on our example. So if you have the left side limit, it's like going up here. And then the right side coming back to that spot is down here somewhere. Since they're going to different places, different y values, there is no limit. Left and right side limits are different. Then there's this weird thing called unbounded behavior. We're going to talk more about this later in this unit with unbounded behavior. But technically, if if you're going off forever and ever and ever, it's kind of like a vertical asymptote. If you're approaching an x value and it's going off forever and ever and ever and ever, since it's going up forever, both the left side and the right side, our answers when we get to this, and again, this is not for this lesson. I'm just trying to point out when does it not exist. We say that it equals infinity, but technically this is not a number. Infinity is not a number. It's unbounded, and it goes forever and ever and ever. So the limit is really not a number. We're a limit is a y value, and this is not a y value. It's forever. So we're going to use this and say that it equals infinity in our future lessons, but technically it's not really, it's unbounded, so there's not really a number there. The limit is not, it's not existing. Uh, we'll talk about that later again in this unit. And then the last one, oscillating behavior at the x value. Here's a good example. If I have some crazy graph that's going like this, and then as you get pr closer and closer to an x value, it's it's like going oscillate, blah, 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 blah. and then here it's wider waves, and then you get closer and closer, and it starts to go faster, 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 faster. So when you get closer in here, if you zoomed in, you would see that it's just bouncing back and forth, back and forth, and it's never really coming together. That's what's called oscillating behavior. It's oscillating back and forth, back and forth. This has to do with some weird graphs you could make with some trig functions, sine and cosine. Uh, you will not see this very often. This number one, this is the one we're really dealing with when a limit does not exist. Once in a while, you'll see something crazy like this, though, with oscillating behavior. All right. Now, the harder stuff that you have to do, you'll have to do this in your practice, in our packets. I tried to give these to you in an order that would make sense for you to try to graph them. So let's start off with the first one. What does this mean? We're going to graph some function g. So this, is, this graph over here is going to be called g of x. g of 3 equals negative 1. That means we have when x is 3, y equals negative 1. That's all that means. So you go 1, 2, 3, down negative 1, and you put a dot. OK? Ding, ding. First one, done. Now we do the next one, limit. As x approaches 3, the limit's got to equal 4. So as x approaches 3 from both the left and the right side, so let me have you think about this. Is If I'm approaching 3 from both the left and the right side, don't draw my, what I have in red here, then the y value is going to be a 4. So that means way up here. Now I've got to leave it an open circle because the x value is down here at negative 1. The y value, I mean, excuse me. The y value is negative 1 already. We've already determined that from the first point. So maybe my graph, I don't know, maybe my graph's doing something like this. It's coming together. I don't really know yet. I know it's got to be going coming together right there. Uh, the rest of this, con these conditions will kind of help me get an idea of exactly what this looks like. So I'm done with that part for now. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side has got to equal 1. Ooh. So we're going to approach negative 2 from the positive side. So here's negative 2. That means, don't draw this part, in red, 
we're going back towards negative 2 from the right side, and the y value is going to equal 1. So I'm going to go ahead, now is it filled in, is it a circle, I don't really know, and I don't even know if it matters, we'll find out in a minute here, but all I know is, you know, maybe I could just kind of connect these, that could work, see, if parts A, B, and C, do they all still work, yeah, if I go back through and check each one, we're still good, okay, uh, what's next? G is increasing from negative 2 to 3. From x values of negative 2 to 3. So if we're at this x value, negative 2, and right here, and then we're going to go up to this x value of 3, right to there, it's got to be increasing. Did I say decreasing earlier? It's got to be increasing. So if we're going up between negative 2 and 3, the graphs should be going up. Ha! It does! That just worked out perfectly. So you see this? It's going up, 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 up. It's increasing from an x value of negative 2 to an x value of 3. Perfect. Well, that was, that was kind of lucky. But you see how I check that? You just kind of go through. And then the last one, the limit. As x approaches negative 2 from the left is bigger than x approaches negative 2 from the right. What in the world does that mean? That means that the left side of the graph, you know, you're going to have some graph here, is going to be, from the left side, it's going to be, bigger than the right side. It doesn't really matter if either of these are filled in. It just means the left side of the graph is, is above, the y value is above the y value of the right side. That's what this statement means. So all I have to do is, if, as I approach negative 2 from the left side, I can have it anywhere up here as long as it is above it. And then it doesn't really matter. I could go down like this if I want. And let's make some arrows here. Okay, I raised my little red marks. There is my function. Here's how you know if you get full credit. When you're done, you go back and you just try to check all these real quick. Do, do, are each of these satisfied? And then you also can take a vertical line and check the vertical line test. Uh, so let's do this. With my vertical line, oh, let's use a different color, red, fancy. Oh, whoa, big, huge red line. Okay, that's better. So we've got this little red line, and we're going to do a vertical line test, and that means I'm just going to take this across, and as long as it passes the vertical line test, meaning it can only cross one time, which it does there, as long as it only crosses one time, then you're good. Common mistake students will make on this is they'll try to draw an extra piece, like they'll accidentally draw like a piece down here or something like that. Well, that's not possible because this would fail the vertical line test right there. It'd be failing it, so can't do that. So just be careful if you want to get full credit for these. All right, we are done. Let's just do this real quick. You're going to pause the video, try this one on your own, and I will have the answers appear. Okay, there's my answers. Sorry about this first one. I forgot to have a little equals one. Your notes should have it correctly, though. Um, mine just didn't. And all of them are true, except for the last one. The last one's false. So why is this last one false? I'll let you kind of go through these. It, it, hopefully, after all the other explanations, these will be really fast to understand why they're all true. But the last one, the reason it does not it, that this is false is, is it does exist. If we approach the x value of 2, that means we're going to go back towards 2 here, back towards 2 here from both the left and the right side. And yeah, look, it's approaching the same y value. The y value is a 2. So it's not that it does not exist. It's a 2. So that's why it's false. All right, congratulations finishing your first lesson in calculus. Loving it. Hopefully this was fairly easy for you to get the year started off. Don't forget to check your answers on the solutions. This is Mr. Bean signing off and rock that mastery check.